We have the upper quarter panels fitted for this top. Now we need to fit what's called the top deck. Now every top is a little different, but generally the seam you want to go right down the center of the curve of the bows. In this case, the side of the curtain quarters are right at that same spot. So I'm going to line the seam of the top deck up with the outside edge of the bottom curtain quarter panels. When I'm putting in these staples to hold it in place, I'm leaving the heads out about an eighth of an inch because I'm going to have to remove them again. With the back tacked in place, I'm just going to pull the front and try to get the wrinkles out of it. And I'm going to put the staples right in the place where the stitching is going to go. And this is where the real challenge of fitting the side quarters to the top deck is. The side quarters were sewn in a long rectangular piece, but because of the difference in height of the bows, it actually has to be cut on a curve. So I'm going to go through and try to simulate where the seam needs to go. I'm going to take these straight pins, again staying where the stitching is going to be so I'm not putting in extra holes. I'm going to try to simulate where I would want this to be after it's stitched. I can't really ever get all of the wrinkles out of the side corner at this spot. But the goal at the end is to have a smooth curve seam that fits this top. I'm going to run a chalk line down that will show me where to trim the quarter panel. And I'm going to put these little dart marks in so that I can keep it lined back up correctly when I stitch it so it will go back on. There's going to be some stretching and maneuvering and I have to account for this. These little wrinkles I have to account for. And hopefully if we get it right, she'll fit like it should. Now if I ended up with all these wrinkles in the seam, I wouldn't be too happy with the result. But when we put these together, we're going to work these little wrinkles out. This is where the buggy top has to fit the buggy that it was made for. Because when you move any of the attachment points of the sockets to the buggy, it throws all this measurement and fitting out of whack. That's why you can't change one top that belongs to one buggy to another buggy. This really seems like a lot of on and off, on and off, and it is. But there's really no other way around it. You just kind of have to make a couple of dry runs and get it where it needs to be. So the seam or the edge of the top deck is going to remain straight. But the upper edge of the quarter panel is going to be cut at a curve. This is what's going to give us the proper fit. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this off. I'm going to leave enough there that we can uh, sew it to the top deck. This is going to be kind of a modified flat felt seam so that it sheds the water. Over the years I've tried pins, I've tried staples, I've tried different methods to try to hold the seam together. But I find that just Putting some adhesive on there and gluing the two together really is pretty effective. If I have a little overspray, I take some paint thinner since this is a vinyl topping and it wipes right off. So using my chalk marks and the dart marks that I put on, I'm going to go ahead and put these two together. 
kind of lining them up, working out the wrinkles. This top deck I have to kind of bend around the curve. Remember it's a straight edge and the bottom quarters aren't. But this is where I'm going to try to work those wrinkles out just like they're going to be stitched together. There were several that asked in the last video why I use these black gloves. These are a nitro gloves, they're real thin, but they help my hands stick better to this vinyl material. Therefore it gives me better control when I'm trying to sew these larger pieces. Now these seams are designed to be on the outside curve of the bow. But to get them stitched I have to kind of invert the top here. So I'm all well, kind of pulling the sides up and letting this be the bottom of all well, kind of the hollow to make this lay flat enough to get through this to the sewing machine. Now this is a little better picture of where I have to bend the top deck around the curve of the lower quarter panels. And these are really the most difficult seams in the whole top to get just right. Because this is where the wrinkles will show or you'll get it right to where it's smooth. Sewing these two seams gets to be a bit of a challenge because it's getting to be a fairly sizable piece of material. So I'm using my hand and also using my forearm to maneuver this whole piece as I come through. Trying to pay attention that I keep it up to my chalk marks. Now on the inside lower part of the quarter panels, remember we put a 2 inch reinforcement strip and an 8 inch piece of headlighter material. So now this loose flap, this is going to be the front first bow. I'm going to cut it away right up to the bow. Then I'm going to go to the second bow and just cut a slit or a little slot that's going to go on each side of the bow and cut away there where the bow actually will be. And I'm going to do this with each of the bows. This is going to be the back bow. Now this one I'm not going to cut away because it has to bend around and fit into the rear curtain. So this little flap I'm going to actually just glue in place. This flap will be visible when the top is finished. This leaves us a loose flap between each of the bows and we'll see how that fits in a little down the road. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this back on and see how we're fitting so far. The first side is going to go on pretty comfortable because it's pretty loose. We get to the other side, I'll have to do a little more pulling to get it up over the top props, but it'll go.
Now at this stage, we're just pulling tight side to side. We're not yet stretched front to back. We'll do that in a little bit. But first of all, I'm going to sew the rear curtain into the back of the top deck. The original one was actually hand sewn, but I don't like that style. One, it's way too much work for my fancy, but this is a real watertight seam to put on the back curtain. So this is what I use. If this were a top that the main concern was being authentic, I would go ahead and do the hand stitch seam. And this is why I don't set my staples too deep, because I know I've got to take them out. I'm going to remove this back curtain, and we'll take it in and sew it to the top deck. So up till now has been a lot of on and off, on and off, but this should be the last time that we have to take it off. I'm going to go ahead and get it in position and then we'll start attaching this top more permanently. Now this back curtain is designed to roll up, so I need two curtain straps to hold it in that position. I have an old one that I use as a pattern that I like, so I take the same top material and I glue it back to back so that the faces are showing. Trace it out and then I'll cut it out. And then I'm going to take and stitch it about a quarter of an inch in around each one of these curtain straps. So in running this stitch, I really don't use the foot feed much. I run the machine with my right hand and control the little strap with my left hand and try to follow right around the edge of these curtain straps. And the ends of these get a little hole punched and a slot that will attach to a drive knob and that will hold up the curtain. This is where I'm going to put the curtain straps, but the curtain straps have to be inside. But before I move it too far, I'm going to sneak in the corners and actually tack this curtain into place. Then I'm going to have to roll the top back to put the curtain straps in.
So with the curtain in position, I'm going to roll the top back, kind of open up where I had some of this adhesive on there, get it down to the stitching, and attach this curtain a little more permanently. I'm going to, I'm going to go back to the same measurement where I want the straps to be. And I'm going to fish them inside so that they're inside the curtain. And I'm just going to put one staple in each one. I'm going to double check inside to make sure they're ha hanging straight before I come back and put the staples in more permanently. So now I'm going to take a tack strip and go ahead and permanently attach this back curtain. Having this tack strip at the top of the rear curtain is actually what I'll start to pull against when I start stretching this top front to back. So now I'm going to go ahead and we'll pull it back over the top props. And I think this is about as far as we're going to make it on this one. We should be getting pretty close on the next one to finishing it up. Appreciate you hanging in there and thanks for watching.